Determining a shoe's comfort is pretty straightforward and largely related to its fit and the cushioning that it provides. Our feet are actually pretty well adapted to running. However, for the last few hundred years, we've been screwing our feet up by shoving them into shoes. As a result, our feet have become dependent on shoes to shield them from the stresses we put them under. On top of that, our feet were never really designed to pound on man-made surfaces like concrete or asphalt. When you then consider that your feet strike the ground approximately 6,400 times for each mile you run, it's pretty easy to recognize the importance of a good-fitting, well-cushioned shoe. But cushioning isn't the only factor to look at when buying a shoe. Your shoe needs to accommodate the way your foot moves and how that affects the rest of your legs. This is what we call biomechanical fit. The trick to finding a shoe that's a good biomechanical fit for you is to speak with a shoe technician in a specialty running store. Understanding the technical aspects of running biomechanics and that everyone's limbs move differently, a shoe tech will look at how you walk and run and decide what shoe will work best for you. One of the best things you can do to help out your shoe tech is to bring your old shoes in with you. Your old shoes speak volumes to a quality shoe tech. The wear pattern alone will often let them understand your general biomechanical propensities, even before they look at your feet or watch how you walk. The tech will be looking for a few things in your stride and the wear marks on your shoes. Overpronation is when your foot rolls inward excessively when you run. The problem is that your foot and ankle can't absorb the shock of your footfall properly, and that can lead to ankle and calf pain or injury. Wear marks on the soles of the shoes here and here are a first sign of overpronation. Try a stability shoe or a motion control shoe depending on how severe you overpronate. The opposite of overpronation is supination. Here, the outside of the heel strikes the ground first, but the foot instead stays on the outside, causing the impact to be concentrated on the lateral side of the foot. This decreases shock absorption and can make it easier to roll your foot or twist your ankle. Although a good shoe tech will play a huge role in helping you decide upon an appropriate shoe, it's a good idea to have a few fit-related issues understood. For example, your foot will swell inside your shoe, so it's a good idea to move up a half size or even a full size from your dress shoe. The midsole of a shoe determines its lifespan. This means that the, even though a shoe looks relatively new, both the arch and the midsole materials could still be breaking down. It's a good idea to change your shoes every 350 to 450 miles, kind of like an oil change for runners.